So today a couple brought in this Durastil electric water distiller, and their complaint was that the heating element wasn't working in it. Well, I figured this would be a fun one because it didn't have any transistors or ICs to worry about going bad. It was really a matter of switching logic and trying to analyze how it would have to work based on the principle of water distillation. Anyway, when I looked the thing over, I could see that the water would have to go in right here, and it had a heating element inside, and once the water is turned to a steam, it would have to pass through these tubes here. These tubes have fins on them. They help cool it down. You've got a fan right here. And once it cools the steam down, it turns back into a liquid minus the minerals. So as I'm looking this over and trying to determine how the logic would have to work, I could see the bottom of this unit had a holding tank and it had a switch on it attached to a float. So I realized, number one, this thing was designed that once this thing is full, it's going to shut the unit off so it can't overfill the tank. So this unit up top here, the actual distiller, is not even going to work if this thing is full. So once I determined the switch was good on this unit, <clears throat> I moved on to the top portion. And I could see that this also had a float on it. In fact, it had a float end right here that attached to this leaf switch. And I want to make sure the switch was okay and that the float was working. And by the way, the reason they put a float on this switch, if this water tank up here happens to be empty, they don't want this heating element inside here coming on. If it does, you can actually damage the heating element if it stays on for a prolonged period of time without there being water in it. By the way, the heating element itself, the two inputs for it are right here. And when I measured across these two inputs, I measured about 7.7 .7 ohms. So that was a pretty good indication that the heating element would be okay. Anyway, as I went through the process of trying to analyze how this thing worked, I checked the switches, made sure they had continuity, made sure the connectors were good. Everything was good. It came down to this little device here, which I believe is just a circuit breaker. And the, let me see, it says um, thermo disk on it. Anyway, I was kind of curious how this thing operated. I know circuit breakers in general, they'll overheat and then they'll open up a, a uh, switch when they, when they heat. And this one here, it looked like it had two inputs from the AC cord. And I figured it had to have two outputs. I assume they would be from here to here would be on. And from here to here would be on as well. One side did not have continuity. In fact, I actually took this unit apart here. I was actually able to take it out of here, open it up, and I found all kinds of corrosion in it. This thing's been getting water seeping down in here for a long time. Anyway, to make a long story short, I was able to wire brush it, sand it up, put it back together. The work, the uh, unit works fine now. So that's all it was, just a, uh, a corroded circuit breaker. Now I'm going to suggest to this gentleman that he consider running it for a couple of days without the panel being on here and kind of look things over and make sure there's no water seeking, seeping out in here somewhere. I can't tell since everything's covered in insulation, but it might be in his interest to kind of check things out. Anyway, other than oiling up the fan and uh, getting this all together, it's working good now. As always, I hope you enjoy the video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.